the problem that we are all having. We have to get on a bus, and it's now the time. Now it is the decade of Corona. I called it. You can all thank me or curse me out for saying that's what it's going to be. But how are we going to get people back on the bus? So this article about getting back to the bus and back to work talks about the fact that we're there's just no way to have single single occupancy vehicles fill the gap that is left by not using public transit. Because if you read the article, and I am terrible with numbers so I cannot retain anything, that's 10 billion annual trips and we can't keep that kind of that kind of uh, cars on the road and still hit our targets for sustainability. So in discussing it, one of the things that I've seen and it is brought up in the article is rear entry doors, extra time for sanitation, prioritizing high occupancy, high travel routes, and basically just encouraging people to not just have the responsibility for mask wearing and social distancing, but also to really determine the flow of traffic and make sure we prioritize getting essential workers to and from the employment hubs. Is that a yeah. laugh? <laughs> no, uh, I, I totally agree that masks should be required. And mm -hmm. uh, I would also wear some sort of gloves just to protect yourself when you're, uh, and you're right, we've, if we had the normal, everybody driving their cars, commuting, and then you added everybody who was taking public transportation into a private personal vehicle on top of that, it, it not only would, it, it's not possible, but there would be so much traffic, it would just be a log mm -hmm. jam and nobody would get anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we need good solutions. I, I think... Uh, Two Wheels has a, a, a good chance of um, coming out of this uh, of being a more viable option. Some cities like Portland are already pretty bikeable, and I think uh, more cities should start looking into how they can encourage that mode of transportation and uh, motorcycles as well. And uh, there's, there's a little, there's, we, we need to rethink things and enable public transportation. And that's, um, well, yeah. that's part of what the, the second article I. I posted, brought up, which is that New York City bike ridership went up 67%. Because yes, one of the other sides of sustainable transit methods is not just high occupancy vehicles, but it is also personal vehicles like a plain and simple bike. And I was thinking about, we we had to ring the, the death knell for an EV bike last, last episode. And I just keep thinking, maybe they should pulled the plug on it just a little too soon, although it was ugly as hell. But ugly still works. Ugly bikes that move you from A to B, if you can produce it cheaply and get us there, why not? So I think that's just, despite the negatives of coronavirus and the lockdowns and the whole situation where we literally don't know how long we'll get, we're going to have to deal with this and what the new normal is going to be, um, one, we are going to get back on those buses just because, as we were talking before the show about the hairdressers, you know, they went to work because they had to go to work. Well, people have to go to work. And we need this transit option because car ownership, even electronic vehicle, electric vehicle ownership is just not viable for everybody. But alternative transit modes of bicycles, personal powered vehicles, and even electric bikes are well within reach of a greater amount of populace of the populace, especially in dense areas like cities. So I think there is a way out of this, and it's actually a good sign because people are making that switch naturally. We have to be careful not to fall into the trap of return to normal because normal before kind of sucked in a lot of ways, and this is an opportunity for us to do things better. Um, a lot of people have made the observation that, wow, you know, the air is a little cleaner and there's more birds and things are a little bit nicer that the roads aren't clogged with ice vehicles all day long pumping out smog. Uh -huh. um, and and, this and is our a lot of people can do their job without driving to the office. I mean, there's that as well. when we Absolutely. do return to normal, people only go to their office two or three days a week instead of five. And that will yeah. help 
This is our chance to close some streets to car traffic and truck traffic and open it up to pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, This is our chance to encourage these sort of, I don't want to say passive, because obviously I want want to see us push people in the right direction. Not push, help people move in the right direction. And the places where they can bicycle or walk, we should do everything we can. And New York's a classic, Manhattan's a classic example. It's one of the most unfriendly pedestrian and bicyclist cities. And it's a city that should be covered with bicycles. Yeah. I'm yeah, this whole thing um, and, and, strikes pretty close to home to me because um, as I was, you know, as I read this article and other articles about return to norm and let's not, you know, let's redefine what we think normal is. You know, here I am sitting here in, in a Chicago suburb thinking, I wonder what would have happened if Chicago burned and people said, great, let's rebuild it exactly the same way it was. Let's build all of these low buildings out of wood. And, you know, no, he didn't do that. They said, now's the perfect time to redesign the city and let's start from scratch and let's take this as an opportunity to move forward. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, Yeah, Portland and... Portland and Seattle have both released plans to uh, cut some streets off to cars and make them uh, uh, low speed uh, friendly so you can bike and walk and they were actually talking about how uh, they want that space to allow pedestrians while maintaining social distancing or physical distancing I should say yeah, yeah and a lot a lot of smaller cities their main street they're closing the traffic and they're letting the restaurants have outdoor seating on the sidewalk and on the streets to give social distancing and allow them to operate with business. And it would sure be nice to stroll down a main street with no cars, you know? Yeah. Uh, Tulsa would do that every third Sunday. And I, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. You don't have to do it every day, but would it be cool? Cause I know there are cities around here. There are suburbs that do this thing called first Friday mm-hmm. and the first Friday of every month. The, you know, the, the stores are open later and there are sales and you just see people out and mingling. Wouldn't it be great if Main Street was closed the first Friday of every month? And yeah, I mean, restaurants had outdoor seating and, and you could do that. I mean, just things like that. Yeah, I, I agree with everybody here because to me, speaking ex Black Fedra, um, I believe in not going back to normal because normal really sucked. So let's get experimental. Let's take the opportunity. Uh, just as an example, a great example, the reason why England has a national health service is because they took the opportunity after World War II when they rebuilt to add in a national health service. Mm-hmm. Don't go back to normal. Go back to better. Exactly. Ding, ding. Yes. And like a, a, a friend get, of mine. They, go back to better. <laughs> That is not that's not a MAGA hat. No, that's that's a better slogan. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, some of my friends they uh, they managed to make the switch to permanent work from home, and uh, they sold their Tesla. So I mean, if that's just one group doing it out of out of everybody, I mean, we don't have to like like you said, we don't have to go back to what we were doing. We can we can we can make it better than it was. Yeah, I think you're going to have to have that that split. Uh, because you know, bike riding isn't going to, you know, do it for everyone. Um, in Ontario, besides, besides <laughs> physically, and of course, where you are geographically, uh, uh, biking in the winter really sucks, uh, as uh, people with snow will tell you. Um, but uh, if you can, if you can do the combination of work at home, as well as get back to more busing. Um, the, those two, and with some biking in the summer months and, of course, the warmer weather, uh, that's going to help. I think you're going to have to have it in, on all these different fronts in order to get to a solution. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally mm-hmm. agree. I, I wasn't in, in any way saying that's for everybody. Um, but mm-hmm. if the city doesn't even have bike lanes, it makes it really hard. Right? So I'm just saying they need to enable it for people that, that where that is viable. Yeah, good point. Now I want to I want to say one thing that was in the article, um, and you know it's uh, the Rocky Mountain Institute, which I read a lot of stuff from from RMI, a really thoughtful, um, really good writing. But there was one thing that really struck me, and I'm kind of I don't know if this was an oversight, um, but there was the the mention of 
buses, um, some of the buses receive funding from taxes and specifically from gas tax. Yeah. So at, at the same time, he says the key is to get cars off the road and reduce the number of internal combustion vehicles driving on the road and provide more funding for mass transportation. And then says mass transportation gets their funding from the gas tax. It just seems to me that as we have fewer people buying gas, the amount of gas tax will go down. So you can't increase funding on something when its main revenue source is being cut. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it does cause a perverted... Go ahead, George. Oh, no. Well, I'm just going to speak a... Uh, attend your city meetings because funding for public transportation at the governmental level is where you need to be concerned. Um, you can sign up to public transit organizations and find out what they need you to do to advocate for additional funding. Resist by Russell sees me tweeting that out on a regular basis, telling people, here's what you need to do. Go to resist bot, find, tell it where you are and what you want to say so you can talk about these issues. I cannot stress this enough. Advocacy to, to cut off things like public transportation from being tied into the gas tax is what's going to assist you in actually making um, for more sustainable public transit and less reliance on gas as a as as an actual government funding tool if you can excise the two then you have a path forward so tony's yeah. right there that it, it is a catch-22 that nobody deals with but that's because nobody actually talks about the fact that using a although gas is not a negative thing it's just a thing but using essentially a negative environmental impact object like gas to fund a positive environmental impact thing like public transportation means that they're going to be at loggerheads at some point. Yeah. And and yeah. Another good point about that is with us all going EV, we've already seen this in, uh, in Illinois, South Carolina, Virginia, where you cut all your gas consumption by going EV. And now they try to make up all that money off of you uh, with some weird formula that makes absolutely no sense. Or they just mm -hmm. pull it out of thin air that, Oh, you should pay eight times the gas tax that you would have used with, uh, with your Prius. And uh, right. they, yeah. they, they've got to come up with another way, even for the gas cars, because they want you to use less fuel. So you're going to buy a more efficient vehicle. Right. So yeah. to to Casey's point, if if you do own an EV and are in the state, connect with your local EV group, because nothing speaks larger than your when you're in a group and you're all speaking together. If you get saddled with an unfair licensing fee or gas tax, that's your best uh, recourse is to uh, as a group. Uh, challenge the government uh, on their findings uh, altogether. Uh, that's how you can make a difference. Yep. Right. right. Yeah. Because paying a reasonable amount for the roads, sure, absolutely, we want to use them. That that's great. But then paying uh, the equivalent of eight miles per gallon? Uh, no, that's not what my vehicle uh, would be getting if it were equivalent gas. That's ridiculous. Right. Yeah, like why? Why should a Prius pay more to use the road than a Hummer, which is or a suburban that's heavier and wrecks the roads more. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely.